I never say groovy. I can't even remember saying groovy. And w when have I said groovy? I've, I've watched the shows and there's not a groovy in there. So, I think that's pretty groovy. <laughs> How do you know when you're playing too many video games? You don't, because there's no such thing as too many video games. Here we go. I'm going to take you to a place you've never been before. It's a dream. We're three minutes away from... Uh, we're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. 31 seconds, and we're Still looking very good. Congrats and best of luck to everyone who entered the Clay Fighter Comp. NMS have received millions of entries each day. Well, lots anyway. And next week we'll announce the names of two of the lucky game heads who have come up trumps. That's next week. This is today. Which, unless I'm badly mistaken, goes something like this. So, so, so. Coming at you today on The Zone, we crank up the power and switch into battle mode with the legendary Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition and the quirky Eternal Champion. We check out the space shooter Biometal, turn mercenary with MechWarrior, and save the oceans of the world with Echo the Dolphin on the Mega CD. In arcade mode, Alien 3 does what it does best. Microcosm struts its stuff on the Amiga CD32. We give you the drill on three games to avoid at any cost, and do the hang at one of Oz's hippest gaming mags. That, and other cool stuff we haven't even thought of yet, is about to step into your face right now on... We've had loss of signal now. First up today, Biometal. The game soundtrack was done by European techno gurus, Too Unlimited. Rumour has it they spent more time on the music than on the game. But it's only a rumour. A funky gaming experience, or just more space junk? Let's find out. This is a very average space shooter. You've got a few spaceships, a few weapons, lots of power-ups, and hordes of alien invaders to blast. Well, this sure reeks of bad game design. Each level is very tedious to play, and the backgrounds are painfully monotonous. Some are so busy that it's hard to see what's going on. The graphics are nice, and the two unlimited soundtracks might get your feet pumping, but the problem is, there's just too much happening on screen, and half the time you have no idea what's going on. The music is positively irritating, even though getting bands to do it is a good idea. Just not too unlimited, please. Biometal isn't a great game, but it might help to pass a few hours on a rainy afternoon. So I'd give it 69. All in all, it's a lame attempt at a shoot 'em up that fails in playability and originality. For your thrills, try Parodius or the classic UN Squadron instead. This full-on snooze core effort gets 51. Here's the zone speak for you. Beefy! Beefy is an apt and elegant way of describing something that is huge, big and bad. Like bosses and stuff like that. It's also a compliment for a Big Mac. Play it, play it, play it, play it. Question. What's black and white and is loved by all Italians? Well, apart from the Mona Lisa, when she's feeling off colour, the answer is, of course, a soccer ball, which leads us, in a very strange way, to soccer vid games and to one of the leading contenders for best sports game of the year, EA's FIFA International Soccer. This is the coolest soccer game I've ever seen, and yet another triumph for the staff at EA. Good-sized, detailed sprites, smooth scrolling, Heaps of options and rad controls makes this one a winner. Well, Electronic Art have truly outdone themselves with this one. FIFA International Soccer is loaded with features to make it totally controlled by you. From choosing the weather, the pitch surface, that is guys, grass or artificial grass, to picking who plays and who sits on the bench. And as usual, EA have included all the necessary stats and instant replays. With superb gameplay and simple to use controls, even the most inept game players will be able to shoot, pass, and score with the best of them. Choose from any team in the world, equipped with their current top list of players, and set your sights on the World Cup. The biggest fault with this game is that you can't headbutt the ref, but you can play without the usual rules of soccer. This counts for something, at least. FIFA, though, also has its hilarious side, as the players carry on in their usual soccer antics, such as backflips when they score a goal, high fives when they win the game, 
to roll it around on the ground, trying to get a penalty from the referee. It's all there in this excellent soccer simulation. It's a must for anybody who's ever heard of the word soccer. It gets a radical 92. It's compatible with the EA four player adapter, so you and a few friends and fiends can beat the world's best without attracting any worldwide media attention. This scores an 88 off the boot. What a score! But he's a nimble old ninja and an absolute joy to control. Blah, 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 blah. Don't touch a thing, because coming at you next, we've got the legendary Street Fighter II Turbo Edition, Eternal Champions, Mech Warrior, some very lame games, and all the dirt from behind the scenes at Hyper, right here on your gaming connection, The Zone. They're on their own. We must act now. Try making contact again with OJ. It's coming through. Contact coming through. <laughs> contact achieved with Soul Star on Mega CD. Three difficulty levels and 40 missions. Full 3D tactical fighting for 102 players. Soul Star on maximum. What's OJ up to? Let's see where these probes are headed. Focus your power on me. I've got everything under control. Focus on June 2. 27 levels of thinking power and strategy as you battle for the planet of June. Prepare your Mega Drive and build your resources. This one's addictive. June 2. The battle is set. If you can get past the rotating drums halfway through the act, head back the way you came and drop down the gap between the fans that suspend you. Go down and head right to bypass the drum section. What have you done? Only what was necessary, pal. Playing too many fighting games can, can turn you into a raving, frothing lunatic. Good, good, because I was getting really worried about that. You are now entering. So we've had loss of signal now. So, championship edition wasn't enough for you, huh? Hanging for more? Feeling the need still for some more hardcore, in-your-face, toe-to-toe, butt-kicking via your trusty pad or joystick? Well, shift it up a gear to overdrive and take command of Street Fighter II Turbo, alive and kicking on the Super Nintendo. Alright, here's the lowdown. Street Fighter II Turbo has been on the shelves for a while now, but people still don't get it. This game is hot. Hey, Street Fighter 2 is simply the best one-on-one -on -one fighting game ever made and the Super Nintendo version of Turbo is excellent in every way. With over 20 megs of graphics, it was always destined to be great. But now that it's Turbo, it's destined to be great fast. All the characters, all the moves and all the speed of the arcade game is packed into this monster 20 meg card with super detailed animation and crystal clear speech thrown in for good measure. You can get all the hot players with all their special moves from the arcade. I found the special moves on the Super Nintendo a bit harder to get out than that of the Mega Drive version. And the speed is nowhere near as quick on the snares, which is a bit of a downer. It's the perfectly tweaked gameplay that makes Turbo stand out from the crowd, and the head-to-head -head mode will last you a lifetime. It's a must-have game and worthy of a big 95. You have the ability to change the difficulty of gameplay, which is really cool. So now you can play the game at anyone's level, from pros to first-timer. As usual, the Nintendo system graphics are fabulous, but the best thing about the game is the crystal clear digitised voices and the effects which all add up to a sensational conversion of the world classic game. While the Mega Drive might be superior in my mind, the Nintendo version sure won't let you down. For me, 93. Mutt here with some zone speak on ROMs. If you were to open up your game cartridge, in it, amongst all the technical stuff, you'd find a small, elongated black thing, which isn't a dead cockroach, it's a ROM. 
Now, before you go ripping your games apart, I'll tell you what it does. It holds all the information that runs the programs that runs your game. Eternal Champions arrived on the scene with enough hype to convince many that a new contender for the heavyweight beat-em-up crown had finally arrived. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. I, for one, am going to need some pretty heavy-duty convincing. Beat me up. I've been good. This is another knuckle buster to ignite your six-button control pad. Sure, you can play it on a three-button, but you'll get about as far as a scuba diver with an anchor neck toy. Okay, here's one for you die-hard sim fighters out there. Eternal Champions is an alright fighting game with unique characters and a few odd special moves, but that's as far as it gets, guys. The controls and the moves are difficult to master, and the fatalities, well, they're almost impossible to perform. This one's definitely got nothing on Street Fighter 2. Mad background with beefy sound adds to the excitement. However, if you've got Street Fighter 2, then you're not going to like this one. But if you're looking for what I'd call the alternative in fighting games, then this one is for you. It does, though, have reasonable backgrounds, and some of the characters are pretty cool to try. But as a whole, it's a case of, if your friend's got it, go play it over at his house. With all the fighting sims that are around, there's stiff competition to come up with the best one. Eternal Champions is a fair shot at it, but still, it doesn't stand up against the rest. A modest 62. It has more complex things about it, like your inner strength, which must be built up before you can do any special moves. Probably the thing I like about this the most is the fact that you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with your opponents and trade insults, but that's probably due to my defective personality. A hard game to win and frustrating at times. It scores 72. At this stage, I think it's still too early to tell how the classification scheme's going to work, but I don't think it's going to have the dramatic impact that a lot of the newspapers might have suggested. I've met with the guys at the classification board. They're good guys. They care about what they do, they care about games, and they're not there to ban games willy-nilly. I think maybe some of the stronger fighting games that will be coming out towards the end of the year, particularly Mortal Kombat 2, could have a few problems. And in the short term, I don't think it's going to affect the games that you play too much, and you'll still be able to play the games that you like. Want to play with some very big metal thingies that shoot laser missiles and other whiz-bang gizmos? Well, look no further. The game is called Mech Warrior, and it's coming to your house in three, two, one. If you've played the Battletech board game, or even if you just like the idea of walking around in a big metal suit, Mech Warrior could be the game for you. Ever wanted to pilot a gigantic mech? This game puts you right in the cockpit of one, and does a pretty good job, too. The graphics during battle are a tad blocky, but the overall presentation is excellent and very atmospheric. Great sound effects too. The huge explosions and artillery fire make the battle sequences pretty exciting, though it does get a bit repetitive after a while. There's a bit of role playing thrown in and you can buy different mechs and weapons on the way, but it's basically a shoot anything that moves combat game with a series of progressively more difficult missions. The Mode 7 graphics are well done, the sounds are good, and it gets very tough. The only problem is that the gameplay is repetitive. But if you can handle that and the slight frustration factor, MechWarrior might just suck you right in. Let's hope it spits you out when you're done. I'd give it 75. The adventure segments of the game add some variation. You can talk to other pilots, get information for your quest, and upgrade your mech. But ultimately, you wish more went into the action part of the game, so that it really kicks butt. Flawed, but worth an 80. Just flick the switch. Magic. Do you, do you want me to say what the thing is? A. Swap it with your buddy's breast. Yeah. Okay. What is it? Coming up next, on tour at the Mags, Echo the Dolphin, The Buzz, Andrew Humphrey's all-time classic, and Microcosm on the Amiga CD32. You're jacked into the... You know what. <laughs> You are now entering the zone. The Oz Gaming mag scene is absolutely huge. With four glossies on the shelves each month, the pressure to deliver the goods is pretty intense. So with nothing better to do, we thought we'd add to the mayhem and stress level the only way we know how. Loudly. How you doing gamers? We're here at Hyper, that's right. This is where we're going to get the grunge and the lowdown of the boys at Hyper, find out what they do for a living. And we're just going to go upstairs and we're going to see Stuart. 
uh, just on the way, I think you should check a look at this. Swing! Let's go upstairs. This is the main man. Hiya. Hiya back, Stewie. How you doing, man? Cool. We've come to ask you some questions. Let me shake your hand. That's the thing to do. So, what do you guys at Hyper actually do? Well, we play games a lot, which is <laughs> that's probably what we have to do. But um, yeah, we uh, basically look at all the games that come in. There's, we do L format, so we see a lot of games. We basically play them for a while, um, see if they're good or not, then put them in the magazine. But what sort of market reaction have you got so far? Okay, yeah, we're up to our eighth, eighth issue now, and um, the market response has been fantastic so far. We've got, I mean, heaps of um, readers' responses and subscriptions and stuff like that, and feedback as well with cheats and everything. Uh, they basically want the latest first, and that's what Hyper tries to give them. So, yeah. That's what we are. I've totally forgot the next question. Let's go for some fuzz, shall we? Now, obviously, you're not Mr. Hyper yourself. There's other people in this company. So, how about you introduce us? Sure, no worries. Okay. Off we go. Andrew Humphrey's our assistant editor. Oh. You're probably sitting on the zone and he's playing games as usual. And I'm dying right now. Face of Andrew, get that in short. Basically, yeah, I, I take on a sort of a staff writer role, doing most of the writing, a lot of the reviewing as well. Also do some editorial stuff um, when Stewie's busy, uh, meeting over other people's stuff, fixing it up, putting it down, taking most of the screen grabs on the Macintosh, getting everything together. That's this thing here. We play all the games through the Mac. So can you take us a run through of what actually happens, how you get the magazine up? Okay. Start off, we get the games in on boards like this, usually, sometimes finished carts, CDs, systems. So Stuart does a plan of what's going to be in every issue, so we know where we're going, what's coming in, then we decide who's going to review what, we send it out. <laughs> we hand all the stuff over to Aaron, our art director. And he makes things look like that. We send it off to film. They send us this stuff back, we read it, we make sure there's no spelling mistakes, like this one. And basically we send it to the printers and they send it back. Hyper. Choice of a new generation. Or is that Pepsi? I can't remember. Hyper. Cool. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time. We'll Ooh. do this handshake thing, you better get that. Yeah. Handshake. Close up. Handshake. You gotta look serious, ready? Serious work. Oh. Do you hear it? Now, most of us have handed over bucks for games that, well, make you want to cry. Now, we would feel pretty empty inside if loyal zoners kept on spending their cold, hard cash on games less than excessively tasty. So stand and cheer as the zone's official thrashing of some really bad games does its thing. <sighs> Captain America. Now, the Cap's a great comic book hero, and he deserves more than this. Static graphics and no gameplay at all. Alien vs Predator, this cart sucks big time. There's no gameplay, monotonous sound, and very, very boring graphics. Now these two are great characters, so what's the problem? Not enough thought has gone into this. It's a rush job, and it looks it. Now Bart's nightmare. Now this is a nightmare. What can I say? This gets less than Bart's school grade. F. Now when it's all in the name and not in the game, and you have to spend over a hundred bucks on a cart, marketing big names just won't cut it. This only reinforces the case to rent before you buy. Here it is, the play, uh, I park it. Yo! Copy, okay? Excellent voices, guys. And crystal clear speech thrown in for good measure. <laughs> From one classic to another, or so we hope. Our esteemed review crew has been asked to share their all-time fave game with us. First up, Andrew Humphreys and his all-time classic, Revenge of Shinobi. It was one of the Mega Drive's first games, but after all these years, The Revenge of Shinobi is still my favourite ninja platformer. Don't let the age of this game fool you. Old Joe Musashi may run around in funny pyjamas, but he's a nimble old ninja and an absolute joy to control. The graphics haven't dated, the music by Yuzo Koshiro is as cool as ever, and the gameplay is perfect. It's a big game too, with heaps of different levels and loads of mean bosses. Once you get the technique down, it's super smooth to play and it packs a major challenge too. If that doesn't make it a classic, what does? Time now for a more serene change of lifestyle 
as we go waterbound for a good looking, great sounding peep at the hectic life of a dolphin on a mission. It's an environmentally friendly classic called Echo the Dolphin, recycled onto the Mega CD. Echo is by no means a new game on the market, but it's been zoned a fair income classic. One of the first games to score points with the Greenies because of its environmental nature, this game boasts excellent graphics and sound coming out of the CD. The scrollings are smooth as silk pyjamas on a white pointer and the gameplay sees you running, or maybe should I say swimming, around the vastness of this binary generated and digitally enhanced dolphin pleasure dome, bumping and grinding to his favourite groove on a very cool sounding soundtrack. This one is for all the family. Echo the dolphin on the Mega CD is serene, dude. You, the dolphin, must find the pod that are your family and friends. To do this, you must tangle with tricky level bosses while finding and singing your way past numerous glyphs to open doorways. So basically, the moral to this story is to save the dolphins, so we won't see a lot of tuna fishermen playing this one for fun. But don't be alarmed if you don't have a Mega CD but really want this game, because it's available in all formats across the Sega console range. They've done a great job of jamming as much as they can into each different format, which means this makes a great game whether you have a Mega CD or a Game Gear. It scores 80. With incredible sound and really smooth scrolling animation, this game, especially made with the CD in mind, is both challenging and enjoyable for all who control it. So as you dodge, dart and sing your way through the oceans, take a minute to listen to the awesome soundtrack and you'll agree it deserves this rating of 84%. Hey guys, how you doing? Remember at the start of the show we said we're going to chuck in heaps of stuff that we haven't even thought of yet. Well, we did. So we're running really short of time, so we're going to have to cut a few of the other things out of the show. And hey, we're real sorry about that. But um, don't tell Adam. And here he comes. Taking his news epic to the streets, it's Muttley and The Buzz. How you doing? It's Muttley. And this is The Buzz in my car. I've got some news for you Game Boy players out there. There's been an invention called the Game Boy 2. And basically what it is, is a converter. So you can play your Game Boy games on the TV. What does this mean? It means you'll be able to play your games in colour for the first time. Moving right along, we have some news from the land of the free and rich exiled international dictators. We hear that the PC slaughterhouse game called Doom is now being downloaded onto virtual reality machines. It seems, though, that the censors, that's the people who brought us the Gulf War, Live Dead and Sweaty, have kicked up a huge stink about this because they're just not happy at all. Mutt cut. They're not happy. We're not happy. We're running mega short of time. But the big news is GameStar magazine. It looks like this. Looks even better in colour. And it's out in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria, and it'll be out in the other states next week. Check it out. It's huge. Anyway, that's all I've got. I'm Mutt. You're not. To be frank, as opposed to being Adam for a change, I strongly suggest you don't get Microcosm on any format because all it is, guys, is hype. Now, while you're checking out all these pretty intro and cutscenes, I know what you're thinking. Adam, you idiot, are you kidding? Look at this. This looks like the maddest, hippest, most slamming game in the history of the joystick. And you'd be right. It does look like a game that could bend your head in many unfortunate ways. The intro surely will. However, oh much too hasty to jump to conclusion, gamers, just as you must not judge a book by its cover, you also must learn not to judge a game by its intro. For lurking in the dark depths of the corners of the shelves of game shops everywhere are shocking games like this ready to rip you off if you let yourself be taken from some. Like, check this out. What you see now is the one and only tedious screen of gameplay in this entire shamozzle. Taking a crummy little ship and shooting blue and red shapes? You can't call this a game. I mean, nice backdrops, guys, but be real. You spend so much time on the icing, you forgot about the cake completely. This ain't a game, it's an outrage. Offensive in a truly terrible kind of way. The intro gets a 95 on its own, but with the game included, it gets a 10. I'd hate to see the PC disc version. Bye now.